Hello everyone, this is Saurian Target coming back at you with another Carnivore's Top 5 video, where today we're going to be looking at the top 5 animals that I think should be added to Carnivore's Ice Age Mobile. So basically what this list is, in my opinion, the top animals that I think should be added to the mobile version of Carnivore's Ice Age. You guys have been asking for this video for a long time, and with the mobile Carnivores games back in operation, a new update to Carnivores Dinosaur Hunter, and an Ice Age update that just released, I thought this would be a great time to decide what new animals should appear in the game. Now, I think we can all agree, the original Carnivores Ice Age animal roster is pretty sad. The Carnivores franchise thrives on inspired knockoffs of popular dinosaur designs. Carnivores clearly took healthy inspiration from Jurassic Park and The Lost World, films which propelled dinosaurs into the spotlight with then-accurate information. However, information on extinct prehistoric mammals has always taken a backseat to dinosaurs, and is not as well known. So back in the very early 2000s, Carnivores Ice Age did not have as much popular source material to draw inspiration from. There are obviously the well-known animals like woolly mammoths, rhinos, and smilodon, but this lack of inspiration is probably why there were so many modern, or at least comparatively mediocre, animals in the game. Action Forms was so low on options that wild boars, wolves, pigs, bears, and even an animal not concreted in science occupy the lackluster Ice Age roster. However, since the release of Walking with Beasts in 2001, it's pretty clear that the mobile port of Carnivore's Ice Age is taking full advantage of the program's release by featuring many animals from the TV special, with many of them even bearing very similar designs. So with this influx of new, popularized information on prehistoric, non-dinosaur animals, tons of new options have opened up for Ice Age additions to the Carnivore's franchise. So without further ado, let's begin. So coming in at number 5 would be a solid, intermediate to advanced rank predator. With the dinosaurs of the carnivore series, the real fun factor tends to stem from hunting carnivores. Hunting herbivorous dinosaurs is fine and introduces you to the formula in a non-threatening way. But it's really the dangerous carnivores you're after. With the Ice Age mammals, however, the dangerously fun factor is not limited to carnivores. There are many interesting and potentially challenging herbivores to hunt, to the point where there are just about as many herbivores as carnivores in the mobile version of Ice Age. And don't get me wrong, that is awesome, as it really adds some nice variety in the wildlife and hunting options for the game. But I think it's about time another vicious, brutish carnivore was added to Carnivore's Ice Age. The Cave Lion has consistently been a top pick among fans, and it might serve well as a bulkier version of the Smilodon, one that can blend in well with its snowy environments. But honestly, there are many more interesting carnivorous cat-like creatures out there, like Thylaca Smilus. This smaller predatory Sporacidont would be a fantastic intermediate rank addition to the game. Its small size would put it about on par with the wolf, and the iconic saber fangs would pose a fearsome threat. However, it is very similar to Smilodon in that regard, almost more so than the cave lion. So the new predator that I think should make the cut is Thiacleo Carnifex, the marsupial lion. Ever since I watched the program What Killed the Mega Beasts so many years ago, I have been fascinated with the marsupial lion. It's such a unique predator. It's not very big, comparatively, but it's powerful, stocky, and downright brutal. I would even be fine with it looking just like it did in the program. Plus, it comes from a family of animals that are not often showcased, so putting it in Carnivore's Ice Age would really help get some popularity going. Taking the number 4 spot would be a relatively non-threatening herbivore. Megaloceros is the standout, elegant, not dangerous herbivore. It's really just a big deer fleet of foot and apt to fly at the first sign of danger. Many of the other polar herbivores are huge, bulky, and ready to put up a fight, rendering the more elegant, peaceful herbivores few and far between. Macrokenia fits this spot well, a Frankenstein hodgepodge of an animal that appropriately looks like it's from an alien world. This creature gained popularity thanks to the Walking with Beasts program. And as stated before, the Megaloceros was put in the original Ice Age as a sleek, relatively defenseless, advanced rank animal. It was ranked so, I believe, for its rarity and elegance. An elusive creature, if you will. 
However, it really didn't sell the part as anything more than a big deer, which, given the context of mammoths and yetis, it kind of failed to stand out. So I think the fleet-footed Macrokenia would make a great pick. Again, this is something few Ice Age animals are known for. Many of them are built to attack with horns, tusks, or fangs if intruders get too close. But Macrokenia has none of those. It relies on speed to survive, and I think would make an excellent addition to the Ice Age roster. If not Macrokenia, I think a Calicothere of some sort would make an excellent addition. Calicotherium is another animal that appeared in Walking with Beasts alongside the Hyenodon, which has already appeared in the Ice Age port. The Calicotherium could function similarly to a mammalian equivalent of the Therizinosaurus, a large, slow animal that defends itself with its sharp claws if provoked. It's not quite as elegant or swift as Macrokenia, but based on looks alone, it doesn't exactly scream dangerous herbivore which could create a learning curve for hunters who try to test their luck against these polar herbivores. For a less dangerous Calicothere, Ankylotherium would make a great substitution. Or, for a more unique design, Tylocephalonyx would be even better, as well as a more dangerous creature, using its claws or huge skull to attack. Taking the number three spot is a new ambient animal. I remember lots of you guys requested new ambients for the Carnivore's Dinosaur Hunter New Editions video, which is a fantastic idea that I didn't even think of. And Carnivore's Ice Age has so few ambients that I think it's due for some new ones. I mean, outside a misplaced flying reptile and a literal pig, the wondrous living world of FMMUV32 is reduced harshly in its Arctic regions. Maybe that's to represent the hostility and barrenness of the frozen wastelands, but I think some more interesting ambients should be in order. The first new ambient additions that come to mind are animals that went extinct relatively recently, specifically flightless birds like the moa and the dodo. These animals aren't particularly high on many people's hunting list, but they would help flesh out the dinosaur planet's list of flightless birds by introducing a non-threatening, non-predatory variant. Plus, they're both pretty synonymous with Ice Age culture, and I think it makes plenty of sense to include these lovable birds to help build the world. Keeping in line with the recently extinct animals, my personal favorite pick is one of my favorite non-dinosaur animals, the thylacine, perhaps better known as the Tasmanian tiger. The carnivores franchise, especially on the dinosaur side, has always been a safe haven for dinosaur ideas that do not necessarily align with modern science. And Ice Age has proven that, at least potentially, more modern animals reside in the polar sectors. So this could be a chance to introduce some more recently extinct animals to planet FMMUV32. The thylacine went extinct in the wild roughly 80 years ago, and its unique design fits in well with the typical design of the newer animals added to Ice Age, and even the most likely candidates as well. If the dingo gets to run wild in Australia today, then the thylacine should be able to run wild on planet FMMUV32. Other ambient animals that would make great additions would be more small animals featured in Walking with Beasts, namely the Leptictidium and the Bear Dog. Leptictidium, as featured in the first episode of the program, is one of the few completely bipedal mammals, and its unique design, small size, and, assumedly, skittish nature would make it a perfect pick for a new Ice Age ambient creature. I think the bear dog is also a good pick for many of the same reasons as Leptictidium. It's small, it's not that aggressive, and it fits the aesthetic mold for what people would expect living in a sector dominated by prehistoric mammals. If none of these options worked, perhaps a small early horse like Eohippus or a type of Hyracotherium would make a good selection. In the vein of the pig representing a smaller version of a larger mammal, the early horse would make a fitting addition to the ambient animal roster, as well as the first equine representative on the dinosaur planet. Taking the number two spot would not be a mammal, but a polar variant of dinosaur. We know that there is some overlap between the dinosaur and mammal locations thanks to Reverence Bridge, with dinosaurs dwelling there in the summer and polar mammals in the winter. So it's not too far-fetched to think that there could be dinosaurs that have adapted to live there year-round, and, by extension, in the rest of the polar sector. The top pick would be the Yayu Tyrannus, a tyrannosaur discovered with concrete evidence of feathers. Where the dinosaurs of the Central and Triassic sectors rely on body mass for thermal regulation, 
in addition to the absurdly warm temperatures in those sectors, dinosaurs living in the north would require feathers for warmth. So it makes sense that a feathered dinosaur like Yayu Tyrannus would live in colder areas, competing with mammalian predators for food. Legendary carnivore's modder Pohorex has already designed a cannon-style Yayu Tyrannus that I think looks about perfect. But since Tatum tends to stick with more anatomically correct designs, I hope they can come up with something that is very creative. Another dinosaur pick would be the Cryolophosaurus. While I mentioned that I would like to see Cryolophosaurus added to Dinosaur Hunter, it makes plenty of sense that this Antarctic dinosaur would reside in the polar sector as well. Perhaps Cryolophosaurus could be the dinosaur equivalent of Reverence Bridge, being found in both the central and polar sectors, with different forms to represent the different areas. I think seeing more reptilian dinosaurs in the polar sector would add some real diversity to the area, as well as increase its popularity, because everyone loves dinosaurs. Now, before I unveil the number one pick, there are a few honorable mentions that I want to throw out. My first honorable mention would be a large variant of a modern-day animal, like the giant beaver, the giant lemur, or giant anteater. The Ice Age sector has already introduced many large modern-day animals, like the wolf and the bear, so it would make sense to include more giant extinct animals that are a bit more unique. An Intellidont would be another great pick. Another animal made popular by walking with beasts, this monstrous pig would have made a much better initial dangerous hog than the wild boar, and the beast's ferocious design would fit in perfectly with the downright scary mammals of the polar sector. In the vein of superior alternatives to already established animals, a Lasmotherium would make a great pick with the right design. As many of you know, I'm not too fond of the woolly rhinoceros, mostly thanks to its design. And the Elasmotherium looks a little more primitive and fierce than the lowly rhino. But the Bronto Terry has already kind of taken the stereotypical Elasmotherium build. So it might take some real creativity to make the bigger rhinoceros stand out. Perhaps with a more vertical build, or perhaps simply cover the animal in thick skin instead of hair, like a reverse Bronto Terry design. Continuing the better versions of already established animals would be Culpanomos as a more unique and stylized bear variant. This huge carnivore could spawn in or around water, which would make a great counter to the bear, which is an idea that would work best if the bear could be restricted to only spawning in and around mountainous areas, allowing both animals to inhabit different locales. Or if Culpanomos is too obscure, a more famous bear-like animal, like Sarcastodon, would work, as the animal has grown in popularity thanks to Jurassic Park Builder. Thalassochnus would also be an incredibly unique addition, spawning around water or swamps and bolting towards the water to escape if startled. It's already confirmed that the animals can spawn in certain areas and remain more or less restricted to wander certain areas until provoked. So a creature with specific habits like the Thalassochnus would not be too far-fetched. Another water-based animal that a lot of you guys suggested would be the walking whale itself, Ambulocetus. Another animal made somewhat popular by walking with beasts, the bizarre Ambulocetus would fit perfectly with the sometimes frightening Ice Age aesthetic. Although, if Carnivore's Ice Age wanted to take a break from blatantly ripping off the program, I think the similarly built Myocetus would nicely fit this role. This animal could spawn in or around water and perhaps use camouflage to lie in wait for hunters or ambient animals to walk by, where it would strike, thus revealing its location, expelling a fatal amount of energy, and exposing it to anything passing by. Again, borrowing from the popularity of Jurassic Park Builder, whose glacier park resulted in a dumping ground for anything that didn't fit the dinosaur or marine reptile mold, giant reptiles like Megalania and Titanoboa might make good picks. Honestly, I would feel a little better if they were included in the warmer sectors, like the Central or Triassic sector, but these huge predators would make fearsome additions, as I know they have been highly requested in the past. Perhaps Tatum could introduce a Savannah exclusive map where these animals could reside, perhaps as the ultimately exclusive big game. And now, the number one animal that I think should be added to Carnivore's Ice Age is none other than the giant ground sloth Megatherium. The Megatherium is such an iconic prehistoric animal, and I'm honestly a little surprised that it hasn't been added to the game at this point. Funnily enough, this animal is very similar to the number one dinosaur I wanted to see added to Dinosaur Hunter. 
Large, slow, and armed with vicious claws, Megatherium would be a frighteningly appropriate mammal to add to the animal roster, perhaps as a large, advanced rank herbivore, similar to the mammoth. Poharex has also designed a cannon-style Megatherium, and I would like to see Tatum's version, should it ever arrive, mimic it, especially in the coloration. While I don't remember Poharex mentioning this, I like to think that the animal is green to indicate that moss and algae ends up growing on it because of its slow mannerisms. This would make it immediately unique, logical, and camouflaged in more forested environments like Reveren's Bridge. Another animal made famous by walking with beasts, the Megatherium, I think, is the most necessary animal to add to this new generation of Carnivore's Ice Age. So there you go guys, those are my views on what I consider the top 5 animals to add to Carnivore's Ice Age. But what did you guys think of the list? Were there any that I forgot, or that would have made a better contender for the number 1 spot? Be sure to let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And of course, thank you guys for all of the continued support. This episode has been pretty heavily requested, so I hope it lived up to your expectations. We've gone from 700 subscribers to over 900 in less than a month, which is just unreal. All of the likes and views and comments and subscribers are just mind-blowing to see, so thank you guys. As long as you keep watching this content, I'll keep making it. Thank you guys again for all of the support. I can't thank you enough for it. A huge thanks to Dino Destroyer for providing the gorgeous Ice Age backdrop screenshots for the video, and I hope you guys are enjoying this winter season. Thanks again for all of the support, and I will see you guys next time.